Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and I'm going to work free response question number three on the 2023 AP Chemistry exam. This is a long problem, and it's worth a total of 10 points out of the total 46 on the free response section. Just so you know, I'm recording this video on May the 3rd, 2023, and the official answer key has not been released yet, so I'm doing my best to share what I think the correct answers are. Just a disclaimer, I do not work for College Board. I'm just a chemistry teacher who's been teaching AP for 23 years, and sometimes I make a mistake. And remember that any answer that is chemically and factually correct will be accepted by the AP readers, even if it doesn't match what's on their key. So, with that in mind, here's question three. Question three starts with a net ionic equation question. So here we have some solid calcium carbonate being reacted with hydrochloric acid to make calcium chloride and carbon dioxide in water. So you have to realize that your calcium carbonate is written as it is because it's a solid. And you have to know that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, which means it is dissociated completely. So it has to be written in its ion form. So it has to be ionized. On the other side, the product side, calcium chloride is an aqueous solution. It's ionic, so it needs to be written as ions as well. Calcium ions and chloride ions. And we have our carbon dioxide and water, which of course are written just as they stand. Now, as you notice here, we, have a, we do have a spectator ion. The chloride ion has to be canceled out because it does not do anything here. And so here's what we're left with as our net ionic equation. However, just notice that we do have two hydrogens here, so we have to balance this and put that two right there. So give yourself one point if you got that one correct. Now part B, we have an investigation uh, involving rates of reaction. This is an interesting question because uh, you know, we have basically two different concentrations, you know, one molar and three molar, and for each time we're doing this, we use three different consistencies. We use a fine powder, small chunks, and large chunks. And in part B, it says the student correctly identifies that trial five is inconsistent with the other trials. Explain why this claim is correct. Well, remember that in kinetics, we would expect that the large chunk would react the slowest. And that's kind of what happens for trials one, two, and three. But notice trials four, five, and six. We have fine powder, small chunks, large chunks. You would expect the small chunks to take less time to react than the large chunk because smaller particles are going to react more quickly than larger particles. And so that's why the student is correct in questioning that data for trial number five. So that's your answer for part B. So I'll give yourself one point if you said that. Moving on to part C here, we have a question about explain why there's a difference in the reaction times for trial two and three. So, you know, in trials two and three, we have the same concentration of acid. The difference is small chunks versus large chunks. And so what you want to say here is that the large chunk that's used in trial three has a larger particle size than the small chunks we used in trial two. And because of that, the small chunks have what we say more active sites or more spots or more places where a chemical reaction can take place. As a result, the small chunks allow a greater number of effective collisions to take place between the reactant molecules and that increases the reaction rate. So you want to say something about the collisions in there. That's an important part of that in this answer. So give yourself a point if you said that. Now part D, uh, the student is claiming that the reaction is zero order with respect to HCl. Do you agree or disagree? A couple different ways to answer this. I would certainly disagree. And if it were zero order, then the rate of reaction for one molar versus three molar should be the same. But that's not the case. In fact, you might notice that if you go from trial one to trial four, the concentration of the acid actually triples and the time is cut in to one third of what it was at the beginning. So that means that the rate actually triples. So the concentration triples, rate triples. That sounds like first order, doesn't it? So we have a couple different uh, levels on which we can disagree with the student's uh, claim. It's, it's, it's definitely first order. So 
there's your uh, explanation. Give yourself one point if you said that. Now, part E, we have a calculation here. Um, we have, you know, the one gram is what was mentioned in the header there. And the question is, what's the molarity of the HCl in the beaker after the reaction is complete? There's a little bit going on here. Let's figure out how many moles of HCl we actually have to use. So I'm going to take the one gram of calcium carbonate and go through a stoichiometry process here. Uh, I need to convert to moles. So, you know, 100.09 grams on the bottom, one mole on top, just like it says in the problem here. Grams are out. And now we can convert to HCl by putting HCl uh, on top and calcium carbonate on the bottom. So we use the mole ratio given to us in the equation, and this is a two to one ratio. So calcium carbonate is out. And it looks like the one gram of calcium carbonate is going to require 0 0.02 moles of hydrochloric acid of HCl. Now, how many moles of HCl did we have available to us? Well, in trial two, the chart up there said it was one molar HCl. And the problem says it's 50 mils, so that's 0.05 liters. So when you multiply that, that out, it tells us we had 0.05 moles available. So if we had 0.05 moles of HCl available, and we only used 0.02 moles, that means we have 0.03 moles left, if my, if my math is correct. Now, 0.03 moles are left over, and what was the volume again? Well, it says that the volume remains constant at 50 mils. So we have to divide that by the 0.05 liters, and when you divide that out, I get that the uh, molarity of my HCl at the end of the reaction has dropped from one molar down to 0 0.600 molar. So um, I think this would be a two-pointer, I'm guessing here, but I think they would give you one point for getting the moles of HCl, and then I think they'd give you one other point for the rest of this stuff and getting the correct answer of 0 0.600. Now in the next part of this, we have a thermochemistry question. Uh, thermo thermodynamics. And the question in part F is, is the reaction endothermic or exothermic? And justify using the information. So you notice that we have the solution and we have a thermometer in there and we're measuring and the temperature is slowly going up. And so remember, that signifies that it's exothermic because when we are measuring the temperature, we're measuring the temperature of the surroundings. So since the surroundings are increasing in temperature, that shows that the uh, system is releasing heat energy. So that it is exothermic. So give yourself one point if you got that one right. Now part G, we have a Q equals MC delta T question because we're asked to calculate Q. It gives us the mass. Uh, we have the C given to us. We can calculate the temperature from the chart. The M, the mass, is 51.0 grams. The specific heat capacity of the mixture is about 4.0 joules per gram degree Celsius given to us in the problem. And the delta T, it looks like it went from 21.20 degrees up to 21.90 degrees. So that is a jump of positive 0 0.70 degrees Celsius. So your Q is about 140 joules. I'm, I'm limiting myself to two sig figs here just because of that 4.0 and the 0 0.70 over here. So we'll say 140 joules. So I'll give yourself one point if you got that one. Now on G2, it says calculate the enthalpy of reaction in units of kilojoules per mole of reaction and include the algebraic sign. Now kilojoules per mole, we've just worked with the joules here. So let's work on the moles part of this. The problem in the header said it was one gram of calcium carbonate that was reacting. So we need to figure out how many moles we had reacted. So once again, your 100.09 grams on the bottom and one mole on top. And that tells us we have about 9.99 times 10 to the negative third moles of calcium carbonate. And the number of joules was 140, but it says kilojoules, right? Delta H is kilojoules per mole. So this is point 1.4 kilojoules. Now, I want you to realize that this is exothermic, just like we said before. So that needs to have a negative sign on the front of it. Okay, we have to change the sign because we're looking at this in terms of the system. When you measure the temperature, you're measuring it in 
uh, in, uh, from the point of view of the surroundings. So we have to change our sign there, make it negative since it's exothermic. And we divide by the moles that we just got up here. And when you divide that out, we get an answer of about negative 14 kilojoules per mole. Question three was a pretty tough question, but I hope you got as many of those as you could. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I hope you think about it and slam that like button if you learned something today. Thanks for watching.